Well, thanks. Um, I guess thanks for showing up. I guess tonight's going to be a spring home ma maintenance class. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll go over a lot of indoor stuff, outdoor stuff, just to kind of get you thinking spring, um, kind of help make that summer a little bit more enjoyable. You know, hopefully everybody can kind of pull away from here with a couple items, a couple of different things that they're going to look at at home, um, try to work at, try to help uh, increase the longevity of their house and, you know, the property that they, they, they have. So um, I guess I can kind of, not sure which one of these, if that works. Does that work better okay. as far as the screen goes? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess thanks for coming. You'll try to make it. Pretty straightforward. Um, you know, if you have questions, feel free to ask. You know, at any time. Uh, if we do have something that's going to be more in depth, longer conversation, you know, we'll try to hold that for the end, and then we can kind of talk one on one a little bit more on a longer in depth uh, topic or conversation at that point. Um, so I guess yeah, you know, as the ice and snow finally finally starting to go away, and we've got a couple nights here where it's going to be a little chilly, but. You know, this weekend looks pretty nice, so get the grill going and be ready for the summer to move forward. Um, you know, everybody enjoys the good, a good summertime break. So, um, some of the indoor maintenance that you can start looking at. Um, a lot of these are just little checklist items. Uh, you know, you can kind of put them on the honeydew list at home. You know, pick out a couple each. You know, indoor, outdoor types of things. Um, whether it's you know two items a day you know on the weekend or tackle the whole list in one weekend and be done, uh, you, that's kind of up to you. But you know good things to do. Uh, check the batteries in your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. You know a good time to do that is when the clocks change. You know that's going to happen this Saturday, so you know that's one thing you can cross off the list for the spring. Already done and over. Um, check your fire extinguishers. You know how many people actually have a fire extinguisher in their house ready and available in case there's something. Yep, and that's, yeah, you can check the pressures. They usually have little pressure gauges on them. Uh, most of the time for a residential house, you know, one of your combination ABC fire extinguishers is going to work good. You know, you can pick one up at most hardware stores, uh, just a smaller tank, uh, just have it available. You know, most of the stuff that's going to happen in the house will be pretty small pretty minor if you get to it right away anyway so you know one of the smaller uh, fire extinguishers would be you know pretty good to have on hand um, you know one thing that I always like to do is check the, on top of the ceiling blades you know I guess I use ceiling fans in the house quite a bit throughout the summer um, you know we're periodically wiping those down we've got kids at home so we always use baby wipes, but you can use any type of you know all-purpose wipe, whatever they might be. Um, check your refrigerator and freezer. You know, check the coils on them. When's the last time you pulled it out and from the and looked at the back of it or underneath where sometimes there's a removable cover in the bottom and the front, and you can actually get in there and get a vacuum in and clean those out. Especially if you have any type of pets at home, you know, cat hair, dog hair, that stuff's going to collect. Uh, go through, vacuum all that stuff out, get the refrigerators and freezers running more efficiently. You know, you're going to help, you know, the longevity of your refrigerator freezer. Uh, you'll increase the efficiency of the unit itself as well at that point. So, you know, kind of check all that stuff over. You know, you can go through and um, get rid of those old green beans that are still in the freezer if you still have them or mix them into a casserole for the kids and you know, put a little extra seasoning in there, they'll never know. <laughs> uh, some of the other stuff for indoors, you know, uh, have your HVAC system checked. <coughs> you know, it's one thing that people don't usually ever really check until it's, you know, 95 degrees out and the humidity has gone through the roof. You know, then they want to come in, have a nice cool place to sit down, relax for the evening, and the AC doesn't work. So it's a good idea, you know, prior to that, you know, scenario happening to, you know, call your service technician, you know, schedule an appointment if you haven't done one in a few years, just to have them come out, check the system. If it needs to be recharged, they could do that at that point. Uh, pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, I guess the big thing with AC, if you do have a central AC, 
It's going to be mounted in your furnace. It's always going to have a drain pan in there. And the, most of the time there's going to be a clear tube that's going to come down from that and go to either the sump pump or to the actual drain itself. One idea that you can always do is pull that off, check and make sure that there's not any gunk built up inside of there. Uh, if you do have stuff in there, get that cleaned out. You know, as soon as that's blocked or cleared or blocked, um, you start overflowing your AC drain pan and that's, that's going to come right down onto your furnace and then you have additional issues besides just your AC. So you can check that out. Uh, you can actually take the hose outside and spray it out with a garden hose. Make sure that's nice and clean as well. So those will be a couple things that you can do. Uh, similar if you have a window AC unit, you know, check and make sure that the little drain there is going to be cleared away. Most of the time those drain and drip onto the outside. Uh, you can always drain them away from the house um, or you can let them kind of drip right there as well. The AC uh, condensates you know, pretty safe for anything. Uh, it's usually the furnace side of it where the AC should be drained to a proper site. Um, another thing that you can check inside the house if you have a programmable thermostat. If you don't, you know, you could talk to one of your service techs or if you're handy or have somebody that's pretty capable of doing that, you can purchase one you know, most hardware stores are going to have programmable thermostats. They're pretty easy to hook up as far as wiring wise would go. Uh, the only thing that you may come in with a little bit of difficulty is if the furnace itself doesn't have the proper wires to program those in. Um, but, you know, talk to, uh, talk to somebody prior to that. But, you know, installing the programmable thermostat, you can set the temperature, especially if you're gone all day, you can set it to a lower setting. Uh, have it kick in a little bit before you get back home so you're saving energy as, as well. Some of the other stuff you can clean and store your humidifier. You know, if anybody has a drier house atmosphere, you're probably running a humidifier during the winter, you know, just to get that, you know, I guess static free type of feeling in the house. Um, Clean that out, get rid of the filter. You're not probably going to use it next winter again anyway. So get that out, clean it all out, and then store it for the summer. Uh, check your dehumidifier. You know, most people that have humidifiers have dehumidifiers as well. Uh, most basements um, that I go to have dehumidifiers in there anyway. Um, check those out, make sure that they're working properly. You know, kind of check them over, plug them in. Uh, clean, they usually have little filters in there that you can clean out. Make sure the coils are nice and clean as well. It's just going to help with the efficiency of the, the system. You know, once you plug those in, they do suck quite a bit of electricity. If you are looking at getting a new one or need to replace an existing one, you know, check and see if you can find one that has an Energy Star rating on it. You know, there's going to be more efficient for, for the electrical side of things. Um, check your sump pump. You know, if you have a sump pump, make sure it's working. You know, an easy thing that you can do with your sump pump prior to having a flooded basement is take a couple gallons of water and just dump it in there until the float itself has been raised and it'll automatically, you know, turn on by itself. You know, two gallons to dump in there to make sure it's actually working is a lot better than, you know, 20 gallons in your basement when you find out that you come home from work and your stuff is floating, you know, nobody enjoys having a swimming pool in their basement unless that swimming pool looks like that. <laughs> uh, some other items for inside, um, you know, check your water heater. You know, that's always an important thing to do, especially if they get older. Uh, average life expectancy of the water heater, I think recently I saw was right around 10 to 13 years, which doesn't seem like that much time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some things that you can do, you know, look at the bottom of it, look for any type of rust, any drips that are coming off of it. There's certain things that you can always check. There's a temperature and pressure relief valve that usually comes out the side and has a spigot that goes down towards the floor. Uh, you can actually flip that and it's going to reseat. Um, it'll kind of surprise you at first. It's a lot of pressure that comes out of there, so it's going to spray. Um, but that's in case there's any pressure built up or temperature increases inside the tank, it has the blow off. So, you know, you're not going to send your water heater through the roof. I think there was an insurance company that had a commercial with that a couple years ago that, you know, they 
shot the water heater right up through the roof. Um, that's not too common. Rarely is that going to happen. You know, you can check your valves and make sure that that works good. Um, another thing that you can do to help with the uh, energy side of it is make sure that the temperature is around 120 degrees. You know, that's something that you can go and get just a little cooking thermometer and the nearest um, the faucet that you would have maybe in the basement if you have a sink or a tub you can take like a little I guess cup and just turn on the hot water and set that in there and it's going to let you know the temperature that it's at so you can check the temperature of the water heater uh, most of them have been set um, a lot of people are turning them up you know you got a second floor bathroom that you want the hot water right away instantly um, so just be aware of that you know to get hot water instantly on second floor somebody might have turned it up it's going to be a little bit hotter in the basement right away you know when it's coming right off there um, if you have hard water at your place uh, most likely you're going to have a water softener already you know that's something that a company can check the grains of hardness and they, they can actually set that properly for you uh, another thing that you can do is actually drain off about a gallon of water each month from the bottom drain and that's just going to help get some of that sediment, uh, some of the sludge that would actually build up inside the tank. You know, a gallon of water, you probably waste more water than that over a month um, doing random other things. So, you know, it doesn't, won't seem like it that much. Um, just kind of helps keep the longevity of the tank. Uh, once that starts building up, um, you can actually build up at the bottom along the outside casing and that's when you're going to notice that you're taking longer to get hot water everywhere. Um, you take a shower and it only lasts for a couple minutes because you've uh, reduced the actual size of the tank itself. So, you know, that's one thing that you can kind of do, uh, especially if you get a new tank. You know, just kind of start doing that initially. Is that generally not required if you have a water softener? Um, no, that's... Uh, the water softener is going to help with the hardness of the water. Uh, most manufacturers are going to recommend as part of their their maintenance catalog um, to do that anyway. Um, they're also going to have you check the burner, uh, make sure that there's not a lot of buildup on the burner itself. You know, they usually call or say to get a hold of a service professional, you know, pull out the burner, clean it, put it back in, check the exhaust flue if you have an atmospheric or power vented one. Um, check your temperature settings on electric, you know, make sure you have a water heater blanket if it's suitable in that area. A lot of newer ones are going to have a foam and they're actually going to have a higher R value. If you have an R value typically under 10 for the tank itself, it's usually a good idea to try to put a, a water heater blanket on there. Once you're over R10, the I guess benefit of putting one on there is not as, as great. Um, so. And would that be on, on the water heater? Yep, the water heater itself, yep. There will be specifics on how to actually put that blanket on there. Uh, you don't want to um, trap the T and P valve, mm -hmm. so you want to cut around that and kind of wrap it underneath the actual valve that comes down. That way that's free and easy. Um, if it needs to be checked or turned on, it can do that. I, I meant and then, the 10 factor. Oh. The R10, that is just kind of a, a general guideline, um, you know, as far as efficiency wise. A lot of older tanks are going to be in that four to six range. Um, Some additional stuff, you know, check your windows and doors. Uh, you know, the winter causes a lot of stress on a house. You know, any old glazing, any old caulkings that you have around windows and doors, you know, can start to crack. Uh, once they start to crack, you know, there's moisture getting in due to rain. Um, it's pretty easy to repair those. Um, the sooner that you find them, the sooner that you repair them, you know, the, the better off you are. You know, especially if you have some older wood windows, you know, to keep that wood in a good, good finish. Um, you know, check those as, as you can. You know, obviously second floor is going to be a little bit more difficult. You know, check them from inside, see what you can find. Most of the time you can check the, the glazing itself. Um, I guess as far as that would go, um, you know, if you do any of the home, home type stuff with the 
I guess, Cox glazing. Um, there's usually lead, you know, depending upon when it was actually built, when it was installed. Uh, the EPA has really good um, guidelines, really good steps that you can take if you do want to replace any of that stuff. If you want to protect yourself, make sure you're wearing dust masks. Um, try to take the windows outside if you can and put poly down just to collect all that stuff. That way you're not polluting anything. Uh, you're keeping any potential lead hazard you know, contained. Uh, you're taking all the proper steps you know, as far as that would go. If you do need additional information on any of that stuff, uh, we have a lot of it here, but also the epa.gov has really good information there, and that's where we get all of ours. So um, you can check the window screens. You know, during the summertime, you're going to have windows open a lot. You know, if you got little holes that had developed or, you know, somebody, you know, kids poke their hole in the screen, you can go through. A lot of times you can get little patches for them. Otherwise, you can get a whole new, you know, piece of screen and just put that in there. That way you're not allowing bugs and bees to enter. Uh, some additional things to check inside, uh, check your bath fans, you know, pull off the, the grill cover itself, see how much, you know, lint and buildup is actually on the fan blades. You know, once you turn them on and they start squealing a little bit, you know, it might just be that they're dirty. Um, clean those out, you're going to get better airflow, especially in the bathrooms if you have high moisture areas. You want to get all of that moisture area, moisture out of that area, you know, make sure that they're terminated to the outside. Uh, if you have a first floor bath fan, make sure that there is a place that it's going, not just in the actual ceiling cavity, because then you're not really doing much other than hiding the, the moisture for the time being, and you'll find it years later down the road. Um, uh, dryer venting, check all that stuff. Make sure it's not kinked, blocked. Uh, if you're Clothes take a lot longer to dry. The outside vent itself may be blocked. You know, go out there, clean that thing out. Take a shop vac or a vacuum and, you know, you can usually clean those out, even the, the ducting itself. If you have a long run or if it's inside of a floor uh, or wall cavity, you can usually take off like the longer, I guess, rigid part and just use the hose itself. And you can actually shove those things in there quite a ways. You know, we do that quite a bit from time to time on jobs where we'll go from each end and, you know, we can clean out 20 feet one way out of, you know, dryer ventings. Um, check all your washing machine hoses, you know, check to make sure that they are sealed tight. You don't have any drips leaking. If you do, you know, is it a matter of them need to be retightened or do the gaskets inside need to be replaced? You know, it's something simple that you can pop that off, replace a gasket, and help, you know, fix a drip. Um, I guess outside, you know, check over things, you know, winter can take a, a lot of toll on your house. You know, there's snow hides things that you can't see on a regular basis. So, you know, do a visual walk around, you know, check your roof, make sure you don't have a lot of debris on there. You know, if you've got a lot of ice damming, you know, make sure that there's not issues that you might be allowing water to get in over the winter. Check those areas out, you know, once they've thawed and, um, you know, if you can get into the attic area even, you know, check in there as well. Make sure you can usually see if there's any signs of water dripping, if there's moisture coming in. If you have bulk rainwater, that's usually the number one deter of houses. You know, if you can get rid of that bulk rainwater from coming into your house, you know, you're way ahead on the longevity of your house. So, uh, check your gutters. You know, make sure that they're not blocked. Uh, a lot of us, you know, get out in the fall when the leaves start falling and, you know, pick up everything in the yard, but most of the time they're left in the gutters. Uh, you know, you can usually have a, somebody come over. Um, there's a lot of service companies that will do it. You know, I've been watching a show, uh, Hack My Life, I don't know if everybody's seen that. It's on True TV. Um, but they actually have a hack for that where you can actually hook up your leaf blower with additional PVC. So you can actually extend it all the way up and then put 290s on it and run it right down the, the gutter. So I'm interested in trying that this spring on mine. So I'm going to see how well that works. And 
maybe have Jason come out and do a video or something for it. So, um, but no, that's that's one big thing. Uh, once it starts to build up there, you know, it has two ways it can go. It can spill over in front, or it can actually go on the back side. Once it starts going to the back side, then you start rotting out your fascia board, and you know, then it just kind of continues from there. So, as opposed to having to replace your fascia and your soffit and you know, potentially interior walls. You know, check those out, make sure those are cleaned out. Uh, always wear gloves if you're gonna clean them out by hand. You know, there's usually some pretty sharp nails in there, or screws in there. You know, don't cut your hands up doing that stuff. Um, check the downspouts. Try and keep them away from the house as far as you can. You know, any water that you can push away from the house is less water that's gonna be able to get into your basement. You know, there's multiple things that you can do to get the water away. You know, you can have your standard uh, drain on the left there. You can get some fancy leaves, you know, in the middle there. And um, some other things that you can do is actually hook up rainwater. You know, if you have um, a lot of flowers, uh, vegetation, garden, that type of thing, you can hook up a bunch of those. Um, I guess I was pulling up some of the facts on that. You know, a one inch of rain on a thousand square foot roof surface can actually give you 600 gallons of water well, uh, just off of one rainfall. Uh, the Madison area itself gets about 34 and a half inches of rain water annually. So I did some of the math on that and that's almost 20,000 gallons of water, you know, yep, off of a oh, thousand square foot, you know, roof. So, you know, it's a good thing that you can help preserve you know the good drinking water for inside your house and you know use the free water that's available to you you know that's quite a few places will have rain barrels um, you know pretty easy to hook up you, know, you can usually install those by yourself or you know with the help of a friend you know in, in no time so you know, I've got one at my house and it's pretty good um, Check any of your um, shrubbery, the trees that are by your house, make sure they're not going to hit, um, prevent any damage that's going to be there. A lot of your shrubs that are right up and tight to the house, don't be afraid to go through and prune those. You know, it's going to help one, keep a nice dry area for your house to breathe. It also will prevent exterior mold. You know, a house like this had some major issues. You know, you can actually see the before and afters where it's almost looked like it was a greenhouse. Um, you know, any place usually on the north side of your house that does not get a lot of sun, there's a lot of vegetation right up next to it, is a good place that you're probably going to have a little bit of, of mold outside that's going to grow. Um, you know, it's usually pretty easy to clean off. You can use a power washer. You can use, you know, kind of a, a hand brush and some soapy water that'll help get a lot of that stuff off as well. So, you know, kind of walk around, do a visual of your house. You know, it's one going to help your house maintain, especially if you have wood siding. You know, if you have vinyl, it's just going to help make it look a little bit better. So, um, check your AC, you know, outside around your compressor. If you have the fins, check and make sure that they're clean. You know, the, the cleaner, the less debris that's around any of the fins on there is going to help your compressor work easier. It's going to be more efficient and it's going to last longer. You know, so go through, use like a, um, a bristle brush on like a shop vac and you can suck that right off. Or like a soft comb, you know, just so you're, or a brush, um, you know, just so you're not bending or denting uh, any of the fins themselves. They do have I guess fin straighteners that you can find at certain places so if you do bend them up you know you can always straighten those back out just to help. Yep. Could you recommend um, putting some sort of cover over that outside AC unit? Um, people to one, you know, probably could use a grill cover or something like that. Yeah um, during the winter when you're not using it you know, it's not a bad idea. It's going to help keep additional debris out, mm -hmm. uh, even in the fall when you know that you're done. Um, 
you know, that's kind of the dry time of the season where you're going to kick up a lot of extra dust when you're mowing, when you're raking those leaves up. Uh, yeah, I, I put one on. Um, you know, I've done it, I guess, since I've had my house and, you know, I guess I haven't had any issues with it. You know, you go out in the spring and pull it off and, you know, you usually got a little bit around the bottom that you can clean up and you're pretty good there. So, yeah, you know, I would, I guess I would recommend it, you know, just as far as, you know, keeping it out of the winter elements. Can you uh, it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, you know, they're outside units. They are exposed to snow, ice in the winter, uh, heavy downpours of rain in the summertime. So, you know, as far as hosing it, mm -hmm. you can. I would be careful on how close you get and the pressure that you would use. A lot of hoses will have multiple settings on them. So you could use like a shower one or kind of more of a flat spray. Um, and just kind of you know get that stuff kind of cleaned off a little bit better there. So um, the big thing there with those are is you know just keeping those fins nice and straight. You know once they start denting, you're restricting airflow going in, which is going to de uh, decrease the efficiency of the system itself. I have so. a neighborhood with a cottonwood tree, and it's uh, a mess. I bet. Nice. Uh, you know, uh, once you're outside, you know, do a quick little walk around the house. You know, a lot of newer developments, newer houses, you're going to find more, I guess, settling as opposed to an older house who's been there, uh, the foundation, the exterior has been established. Although, if you've had any utilities in, if they've changed out anything where anybody's drilled, dug, um, you may find low spots. You know, go through, uh, fill in all those low spots, um, make sure you get that grading back away from the house. You know, so any, you know, any water you can stop from coming in is, is the best. Yep. How far beneath the top of the brick layer or the concrete should your soil be like right next to your house? Um, you know, in, in a scenario like that, you might be limited on the grading of the house itself. Mm -hmm. You know, where it could be like a walkout basement in the back and it's going to taper all the way around. So in the front, it's going to be much higher. With a window well like that, you know, if you can try to get the differential a little bit closer, so the outside of it is going to be a little lower, you know, that's going to be the best. You know, any water that's going to collect there, you know, it's going to push down and wick back up again. So you will get a little bit regardless. Um, you know, sometimes having like that exterior uh, drain tile. You can always tie those in. You know, if you're doing like a large, you know, exterior landscaping project, you can always get those. Uh, you can get like the perforated ones, bury those in there. That way any excess of rain that's going to come in that the ground can't hold can actually go into the drain tile and you can tie that in and wrap it around the house and kind of shut it away. So, yeah. uh, I guess if you have wood houses, you know, that's not what you want your house to look like. You know, be careful. Um, good maintenance on your house, uh, especially wood house. You know, check for cracks, check for paint peeling. You know, anytime that you can address that initially right away is going to be better off. You know, once you start waiting, once it starts to peel, um, the bottoms all start flaking off, then it takes a little bit more time. You have more time invested in yourself to try to fix that problem. Um, you know, work lead safe. You know, like I said prior, you know, EPA is going to have really good um, environmental, you know, safety precautions to go through. Uh, we have a bunch of information as well that we actually get from EPA. So if you need additional information on working lead safe, you know, as far as any type of PPE, you know, respirators, gloves, you know, suits, your poly, that type of stuff, and somebody's going to do like a major project, you know, let us know. You know, we can help assist you if you have any actual questions or need any guidance in that area. So, um, but yeah, but wood houses are the, the main culprit for most of the, your paint peeling and lead and, you know, it's, yep. Um, check your windows, you know, similar to the inside, you know, check them from the outside. You know, make sure everything is sealed properly. Uh, if you have windows to replace, uh, you can replace them yourself if they're single pane. Those are pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, 
as far as like a double pane, you know, most window, window contractors, um, a lot of um, other places can actually replace those or get replacement kits for you for those. Um, but I guess if you have, you know, huge holes, you're probably going to fix those a little bit sooner. You know, small ones, you know, small cracks, keep an eye on those so they don't spread, uh, so they don't start to create a larger hole that you might need to, you know, start debating whether you need a whole new window versus just a pane. So, uh, fill the cracks in your driveway and sidewalks. You know, those are little areas that, you know, you keep an eye on them. Uh, most of the time they have the control joints there already. That's where they're going to crack. Uh, a lot of older ones are going to crack wherever they want to. So you can usually get, you know, there's a lot of um, tube, you know, cement uh, crack fillers that you can get that are pretty easy to work with. You know, you usually have like a little backer that you would put into it and then you basically caulk it shut. Um, there is a hydraulic cement that you can get for any larger projects. You know, that stuff's going to set up. You know, a lot of people use that actually on their foundation walls and stuff like that or in their basements. So those are a couple different products that you can use. Um, you know, otherwise, if you got some creative people at home, you can make them look pretty neat. So. Can you do that in your garage space or garage uh, floor also? Yeah. Yep. You should be able to do that. You know, it's it's just usually a matter of time, um, depending on how there's any type of settling uh -huh. that you may develop cracking. Um, uh, check your deck and patios. You know, they do take a lot of abuse over the winter. You know, there's nothing worse than walking out onto your deck and having a huge splinter in your foot in the springtime. You know, so go out there, check that out. Look for any sharp edges, splinters. Uh, if you have rotted wood, you know, try to get those patched, repaired right away. Um, you can use a pressure washer on those if you were thinking about trying to restain them. Just be careful as well on the pressure on those. You know, don't actually get into the grains of wood all you're trying to do is get the surfacing material off. So, you know, a little bit lighter on that is better than a heavy, you know, high pressure and straight down on it. So, um, you know, you can always reseal your deck boards. You know, if you have stain from the previous year, you know, it's usually pretty straightforward as far as patching a smaller spot. <clears throat> um, I guess some of the additional outside areas to check, uh, just your outside spigots. You know, make sure none of them burst over the winter that they were drained you know, properly in the fall. Uh, once you turn them on, and if you can actually hold your finger over that spigot, and the water doesn't come out and you don't have any pressure coming at you, you might want to go back inside and check because there might be issues inside where the water pressure is uh, pushed out to. Um, check your garden hoses, check all the gaskets, you know, make sure that they're good, you know, look for dry rot, um, change out the gaskets on your um, hoses, they're going to help seal the connections better for you, you know, especially where you have, uh, you know, your the ends are going to hook up to your spigot and the other side on the wands. Um, you know, check your lawnmowers, you know, get the oil changed, sharpen your blades, you know, make a mowing a lot easier and get the grill out and clean that thing up, you know, get ready for summer. So, um, you know, that's, I guess, the uh, Spring cleaning, you know, it's pretty traditional, you know, as far as, you know, kind of a checklist goes, you know, there's items on here that you can just kind of pick out, you know, do a couple at a time, you know, when weather permitting in a few weeks, you can get outside and start doing some of the exterior stuff, you know, just get a good handle on everything, you know, grab a couple items at a time and just go through them and, you know, give yourself a checklist and go through and check that off, you know, it's taking care of all the stuff in the spring, you know, you can enjoy your summer and, you know, help the efficiency of your house, the longevity of your house and, you know, the structure and environment around it. So I guess hopefully everybody kind of had, has a couple items, a couple new things that they saw and will be excited to go out and check on their house. So, um, I guess, yeah, have a great summer. So if there's any questions. I just have one question. I was going to ask it before, but 
like my basement windows are level with the ground. Would it be better to get like a window well? The. Because I mean they have screens on. They're all, you know, just the little ones. I guess as far as the bottom of the window is flush with the ground itself. That's. Um, do you notice any water moisture no, wicking in from the inside? Digging when I do anything else by the windows from animals. But, oh. Okay. Because, yeah, usually the inside you're going to have really good signs of that where you're going to see water staining that's going to be coming in. If you do have that, it's probably a good idea to start investigating, you know, trying to get some type of drainage away from there, um, trying, to, trying that window well where you're actually going to remove some of the grade from there and allow that water that's coming in to soak into the ground at a lower level as opposed to a higher level right by the bottom of the window. So, okay. so, okay, yep. Um, I was under the impression that you should only trim trees once they've gone dormant. Um, the, that would be a great question for an arborist. <laughs> um, we have, we, <laughs> yeah, you want to wait till they're growing up. Like, so if they started budding, then you have to wait until next year. Yeah. And depending on the trees as well, there's like different the species. Um, cause I had an oak tree that was trimmed during the winter time. And they told me that the oak trees themselves actually have a winter bud. And just throughout the years, they know the difference and they know what they're looking at specifically. So they can pick out dead sections during the winter time on certain trees. So, you know, that's something that, you know, you should probably check with a couple different tree trimming services and just say, you know, if you have a specific tree, you know, is there a better time to trim this certain tree? And, you know, check with multiple. Um, they all give you the same answer then you know, you're pretty safe on that. So, 